Texas voters have set the stage for a major showdown in the race for governor. Democrat Beto O'Rourke will face off against Republican incumbent Greg Abbott in November. Elections after winning their primaries. Abbott has pursued a number of controversial policies recently targeting reproductive and LGBTQ rights. Meanwhile, Republican Attorney General Ken Paxton and George P. Bush will face a runoff election in May. Omar Villafranca is here to break down the results for us. Uh, all right, Omar, uh, Governor Abbott defeated several challenges uh, from the more extreme mm -hmm. faction of the Republican Party. Uh, what does that tell you? Well, it tells us that Abbott and the Republicans in the state of Texas uh, still have a good relationship and they're still on good talking terms. And it's worth pointing out, uh, one of the candidates, Alan West, former Florida congressman, who came to Texas, became the state uh, GOP chair. He beat him and another state senator, Don Hoffines. But those two had never run a statewide race uh, in the state of Texas, and Greg Abbott has. He did as attorney general, a Texas Supreme Court justice, and as governor, and that matters. That matters in a state this big, so wide across two time zones, and the ground game matters, and Abbott proved it. So it's going to be uh, him and Beto O'Rourke, who made a big splash when he tried to unseat uh, uh, Senator Cruz. He didn't ultimately win. So what is the expectation for this battle? Will it be a close one? Define close, Anne Marie. <laughs> People are going to watch to see exactly how close this will be. I don't think any uh, political prognosticators are out there saying that Texas is a battleground state. But people want to see how Beto versus Governor Abbott is going to play out. Beto has run a statewide uh, race before, as you mentioned, but he lost. Abbott has as well, and he's won multiple times. But two things to keep in mind. It's a midterm, so the... Uh, amount of people coming out to vote is usually not as big as a presidential. That could favor Republicans. Uh, and another thing to keep in mind, which is just a fact, it's not a knock on Beth O'Rourke, but no Democrat has won any statewide elected seat in the state of Texas since 1994. Hmm. So if a Democrat's got to win, they got to prove it. There can be column inches and internet stories and, and broadcast stories for days, but until a Democrat wins a statewide seat in Texas, it's just, it's just guessing. Hmm. Uh, so what can you tell us about Representative, uh, and I'm not going to get the name right, Henry Cuar? Cuar. Cuar, yes, thank you. That's an interesting Should've race. Because, there, but I appreciate you, yeah, Omar, he, as always. <laughs> yeah, yeah he, he's in South Texas. He's got part of, like, the San Antonio Bear County area and Laredo, Webb County. That's interesting. He's come under, uh, actually, like, the feds raided his house uh, just this year. He's a nine-term congressman. He's running up uh, against a young progressive challenger. And the AP's projecting they're going to go into a runoff. It is, it is razor thin at this point. They're still trying to tally some of the, uh, some of the votes. Uh, but that's going to be interesting to see. He's, he's probably one of the most conservative Democrats uh, in D.C. And so he's in one of those uh, districts that there's some progressives moving in in far south Texas. Now, that'll be up in May. But keep in mind, the Cuellar family is pretty uh, p uh, powerful down there. Webb County, where Laredo is, his brother is the sheriff. So people know the Cuellar name down there in South Texas. So, uh, you know, it's going to be an interesting race to watch. So this is the first election since uh, Texas passed their controversial new uh, voting law, election law. Um, yeah, what sort of impact did it have? We saw already that there were a ton of mail-in ballots that were thrown out. Yeah. Yeah, and mail-in application ballots uh, and then, like, mail-in ballots themselves. Uh, there was some rejections, and then there was some... Then they have to correct them and cure them, as they call it, uh, to get them proper. But mind you, this was just the primary. Primary voting numbers are anemic compared to the total amount of registered voters in the state. So this was almost a small test run, and we were seeing problems. We want to see what's going to happen in the runoff. Less people will vote in the runoff than they do in the primary. The general election is what people are going to watch, and uh, a, a bunch of state uh, election officials that I've talked to are telling me they're going to be spending a lot of time and energy on educating voters on what they have to do to get that ballot right. So we're expecting more hiccups along the way. Yeah, I'd say it doesn't bode well if they're already having problems. Um, Omar, thank you so much. Thank you.